Aloha, everybody, and welcome to part six of Mighty Number no. Nine. Now then, back. You needn't fight every robot you see. Our objective is the factory core. But I want to kill every robot I see. It's a 2D platformer. They're going to get in my way. I'm going to have to kill them, Dr. White. <laughs> what about my ranking? How am I supposed to get the S rank if I don't go and kill every single thing that gets in my way? Come on, Dr. White. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, folks, we are in the Cherry Dynamics Robot Factory, the first of three endgame levels. And that means we're getting too close to the end. We have all eight powers, so we're probably going to have to utilize all of them to get through this level, like we did in Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, or Mega Man 9's Wily Castles. So, right off the bat, we have a ledge that we have to use these boxes to jump up to, and, uh, oh man, it's too high. There's no way I can reach it. Well, we just picked up a power from Avi, which turns our hand into a propeller, which we can use to throw at enemies as some kind of makeshift boomerang. But, if you hold the button and then jump with it, the propeller will give you extra height to reach places that Beck could not before. So that's how you get a little bit higher with Avi. And all of these gates are timed, so I have to use Battalion's timed bombs. I set them on the switch, and then I blow it up right as I'm at the door so that I can progress forward. And, uh, the Avi propeller can also help you lower into areas rather gently and rather slowly. And considering all this electricity here is one hit kill, oh, you better use it because you don't want to die and redo this over and over and over again. It's a very, very challenging platforming section right there. And now we come to this mini-boss, this computer mini-boss that is constantly dropping in enemies through these three tubes, and it is incredibly weak to Cryo's ice ability. It drains its health like nothing, and I would recommend using it on all of the baddies that drop out of these tubes, because it freezes them in place, keeps them still, and you're going to get so much zell from them when they're frozen that you're never going to run out of weapon energy in this room. Not really. Ha! Some computer you turned out to be! Another ability I didn't talk about was Counter Shades. I got that just before I beat Avi, and when you shoot enemies with Counter Shades bullets, they will bounce to the nearest enemy that is right nearby. So, this hallway right here, completely trivial. It's vertical, it's hard to hit things from, from Beck's perspective with just the Beck Buster because he only shoots horizontally, but when you use Counter Shades bullets, it hits everybody. It just immortalizes that entire hallway and then I'm perfectly fine. I actually like Counter Shade's ability quite a bit. I think it's pretty fun to use in levels, along with so many weapons in this game, like Brandishes, because I don't waste weapon energy slashing the face off of this intro boss from the intro stage that we've already beaten before, but now it's slightly harder. Boom! I use the sword and I just cut him down to shreds like it's nothing. Nothing, I say. <laughs> Some of you can probably tell, I have played Mighty No. 9 quite a bit to know these levels inside and out. Uh, I haven't played through Mighty No. 9 once or twice or three times. I've played through this game at least six or seven times now. I'm quite familiar with Mighty No. 9, and it's not such a train wreck of a game that I can't come back to it and replay it over and over and over again, you know? I actually think it's way more playable than a game like Mega Man X6 or X7. Oh boy! You want to get me started, make me compare this to X6. Ah, young one, not to worry. Nothing here my blades can't handle. We've got this area under control. Go help Cryo's team instead. Yes! I really like this room, and I really like the concept of all of the mighty numbers actually helping back after you defeat them in battle. In a game like Mega Man Powered Up, you could use your Mega Buster to snap Fireman, Gutsman, Iceman back to their senses and make them playable party members, but that was for like an alternate what-if scenario where Dr. Wily didn't grab Fireman, he didn't grab Gutsman or whatever, and so they didn't really help Mega Man out with the adventure afterwards. With Mighty No. 9, they actually get rid of some hazards and stages, so it's not just getting their weakness for the next boss. And I like the fact that in the final levels, they're actually all joining forces to storm this base, to storm this robot factory and kick ass together. I'm fighting with Brandish, Cryo, uh, Seismic, I'm fighting with all the gang in one room and we're all just taking the fight to this castle like a team, like a group of friends and heroes that it's actually a nice unity and it's a nice... You know, if this game had way better storytelling, this would be a really cool, really fun moment for the game. 
where all the mighty numbers are banding together to take on this great evil. I think that's actually pretty damn cool. And in a better Mighty Number no. 9 game, if they ever make a sequel to this that isn't uh, Mighty Gunvolt bu uh, Burst, that might be awesome, you know? Good heavens! I've never seen its like before. Has the factory started making its own designs? Beck, you must disable the computer core, there, before it can create an army of these. Alrighty, so this is the boss of the robot factory, Nameless. Uh, it's not the tank. I can destroy the tank rather easily with Battalion's timed bombs. Just shoot them at the eye, blow up, and this thing's health will go down really quickly. Now, the real boss is the computer behind him, which again, like the computer mini-boss from before, super weak to Cryo's ice ability. He can drain his health so quickly. Shoot, 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 dash. Shoot, 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 dash. Ah, I almost one-shotted him. <laughs> I almost got him in one cycle, but uh, eventually it wears off, and then he drops in another tank that you have to kill. And uh, Oh, here's another cool ability of Avi's. He can actually protect Beck, uh, from, you know, missiles and stuff by using the propeller as some sort of makeshift shield because it actually damages whatever runs into it. So, again, I love the powers of Mighty Number no. 9. I love the boss fights of Mighty Number no. 9. This stage I'm playing right now, this is legit. I don't think this has any problems whatsoever. I've heard people complain, like, oh, I had to learn how to use the powers in order to get through it. And it's like, well, sure, but how's that different from any other Mega Man game? Mega Man 2, Mega Man 1, whatever, you all had to use the Magnet Bean, the Item 1s, the Item 2s and stuff. That's the whole point of experimenting with this stuff, you know? And, uh, I think this level's pretty damn fun. I think it's pretty challenging. I think it's a great culmination of all the powers I've gotten so far, and I, I really enjoy this bit. My Day Number 9, it's, it's a game that I'm very bipolar with. There's lots of things I can criticize about it. There's lots of things I could nitpick and get mad at till the cows come home, but at the end of the day, I don't think it was one of the worst games of 2016 because it's still giving me some really solid Inti Creates Mega Man action at the end of the day, you know? For my money, this is a legit good level. I like the bosses here, I liked the speed and flow of it all, I liked how the mighty numbers were actually helping out in the background. I think this is a pretty cool level. I like this stage. Excellent. That should halt the manufacturing of any more Berserker robots, at least. Good work, Beck. I'll meet you back outside the factory. There's someone I must see first. What the hell are you? <laughs> because Beck and White are at the robot factory, and Call and Dr. Sanda are heading to the prison, this is the one brief moment of the game where all of the menu characters get replaced with these tiny helper robots, but, uh... Yeah, folks, now we're heading to the prison. Beep boop, beep boop, robot speak. Yeah. System ready? Go! All right. This must be the main prison building. Dr. Blackwell's cell will be deeper inside. We'll need key cards to access the maximum security wing, Doctor. Please wait here. Alrighty, folks, so now we have something completely different. We are not playing as Beck for this stage, but instead we're playing the female helper assistant robot, Call, who you've seen in the background of every single cutscene. Because while Dr. Sanda and Dr. White and Beck are all talking in all the cutscenes, Call's just sort of been in the background chilling, talking about computer stuff. <laughs> I don't think Beck and Call have actually talked to each other before this level. I might be wrong about that. Maybe if you go back to the earlier levels, maybe they did say something to each other. But uh, yeah, Call just sort of gets dropped on us. We don't really have a proper introduction to her character, but... Uh, yeah, this level was not a part of the original initial $900,000 Kickstarter goal. Uh, this was a Kickstarter bonus level that backers managed to pay for so that we can get an extra level where we play as Call and sneak through the prison in order to find Dr. Blackwell. So, uh, this wasn't going to be part of the game initially. Well, it, it wanted to be, but it w could have potentially not have been, you know? Whoa, a patch service bot! Perfect timing! Call! 
plug in to recharge your shield energy. Use that as fuel to power your energy barrier. And press the shield button to activate it. Ready. Doctor, a question. Why was I equipped with an energy shield? Uh, well, it's, uh, just, uh, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you know. It's a video game, Call. Shut the hell up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Call has a shield. Whenever the robots see her and they shoot their little pellets at you, you can actually turn on the shield in order to deflect those bullets off, uh, but it wastes weapon energy. And the thing about Call is, she does not absorb cell the same way that Beck does. When she weakens enemies to their base color, whether it's green, blue, yellow, red, uh, she can't dash into them and absorb their ability to get weapon energy. She can't destroy them that way. If they're colored and you try dashing into them, you're just going to take contact damage. The only way to get weapon energy back is to constantly run into all of these tiny little helper robots like that one right there. Boop! There you go. And that's how you get your weapon energy. It doesn't recharge on its own. You have to find them. Ah, yes, this, this door is locked electronically. One sec while I hack it open. Great Caesar's ghost! They found us! Please focus on hacking the terminal. I will try to neutralize any threats. Call still has the ability to dash like Beck does, but again, it doesn't kill enemies. And her shooter, her blaster, has a slower rate of fire, and it's not very effective against most baddies. These bombs here, I have to wait for them to explode and blow up on their own. Now they're bringing in these tiny guys that Beck has fought in previous levels, but you'll notice it takes a shitload more bullets to destroy them with Call than it does with Beck. And again, when they're blue, I can't dash into them to get their Zell. I take contact damage, so you really gotta be careful and look out for that. I'm just shooting these things over and over and over again, even though they're tiny and really should have been destroyed so much quicker than that. But uh, when these big guys show up, they're gonna shoot their little blade at you, and you wanna hit their eyeballs so that they'll get blind, and then the blade will BOOM! Take them out just like that. I actually really enjoy that animation. I like that. But, uh... Yeah, for the most part, Call is very much a slower-paced fighter compared to Beck. It's not nearly as intense. Interesting. Not real. What is it, Call? I often detect an aversion to combat in Beck's vocal patterns, while I have no such reluctance. Question. Why would Professor White include that hesitation in his design? It's... illogical. Hmm. Uh, yes, uh, well, that, uh... Yo, Dr. Sonderman! Did you call some call, huh? <laughs> Thank the maker I reached you. I scouted up ahead and spotted a nasty guard dog. I'm talking one sick puppy. But I got a pro tip. Blast his big eye first. It's his weak point. Then go for massive damage. Ugh. It's not only Beck. All of Professor White's designs have such contradictions. I talk like a robot and everyone else talks like a normal person. I guess we won't go into that. Maybe in a sequel. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, again, utilize the, the shield a lot more often than I am. Actually, I just started using it now. You'll see as I'm climbing the structure. All the bullets bounce off of me. But again, it wastes weapon energy, so use it sparingly. This has a sort of exploration element to it because all of the gates, you need key cards in order to open. So if you ever see a box, destroy it before you go on. You want to explore, find these key cards before you move on because you'll get to this door, find you can't open it, and then, oops, you're screwed. And uh, Call also has the ability to hover. And this is going to be super useful here because, oh, look, it's those good old insta-kill electricity death spikes. Yay. <laughs> so, uh... I don't believe hovering wastes your weapon energy, but the shield definitely does. And uh, since I'm going down a pathway with all these turrets, it's a good idea to turn on the shield. And be careful, be careful. <sighs> I almost nicked my head on the spikes. I almost nicked my head on the spikes. Jesus Christ. My heart. <laughs> I'm so tense. Oh, God. My spine is clinging to my back.
So we got ourselves a boss, folks. This is K9, and it's by far the weakest, lamest, most boring, slow boss in the whole entire game. Because we have to wait for this guy to do things before we can damage it. Uh, it has an eye at first, you shoot it, we did that much health to its health bar. We destroyed that much health to its health bar, I should say. Uh, it shoots bullets, but again, your shield can wear off eventually when you run out of weapon energy, so you don't want to use it sparingly. This boss fight will be going on quite a while, and every now and then, these robots will come in, they'll drop one of two enemies. If they drop in the searchlight enemies that have that you've been avoiding the entire stage, if the dog swallows them, he will get an eye back, and then you'll need to shoot the eye in order to get him to do his usual routine of shooting, you know, crazily, and then waiting for another bad a baddie to drop another enemy. But they have the chance of calling in a robot that will drop a bomb enemy. And if K9 swallows the bomb enemy, it drains their health really, really quickly because it's an explosive. It, you know, big boom in their belly. Yeah, fine play, even though that's how you're supposed to do it, but whatever. <laughs> so, if you're lucky, you'll get bombs. If you're unlucky, you'll keep getting those turrets and it will just go longer and longer and longer and I just, you know... I'm just waiting for things to happen, and then I react accordingly. I've accomplished the two fine plays that this boss is capable of, and got myself a PlayStation trophy for it. <laughs> so yeah, boss fight's pretty simple. Um, Cole actually had a whole bunch of designs that people actually got to vote on and choose, and this was the one ultimately fans decided that they wanted. This is version F. Uh, I was always a fan of version E. I would have liked to have seen Call in version E. That seemed like she would have been a more expressive, more out there character, but no, they wanted to go with monotone, boring robot character who... Sorry, honey, you're no Roll. <laughs> Roll didn't have that much of a character in the Mega Man games either, but at least I cared when she got Roboenza. At least I cared when she died in Super Adventure Rock Man. Oh yeah, she can die in Super Adventure Rock Man, and it's a sad game over, man. That's a sad, sad thing. If you don't know what Super Adventure Rock Man is, look it up, kids. Look it up. But, uh... You're no roll call. You're no roll. Oh wait, is that a pun too? Roll call? <laughs> God damn it. Inafune, you bastard. But, uh, yeah. Eventually, this thing's health will finally go down, and that'll be that. This is the longest elevator I've ever seen. Where are they going? The core of the Earth? Christ. Mission! Clear! And because I don't have to absorb a whole bunch of Zell from various enemies and get 100% of the Zell, uh, it's really easy to get an S rank in Call's level, so uh, I almost always get an S rank in this level. Anyway, folks, we're heading to the final stage in Part 7. See you then. Uh, hello, Dr. Blackwell. Hmm. One of those Sanders, aren't you? The scientist one. What do you want? Do you know what's going on outside? With the crazy robots? The, the clashes? The, the chaos? I am aware. Hmm. What did that twit Graham expect activating her again? Again? Hmm. Graham? From Cherry Dynamics? What do you mean, activating her again? Trinity, of course. Graham is obsessed with using her to disrupt the weapons industry. The fool. I stopped him last time. And what thanks did I get? Uh, a lifetime stay at this maximum security resort. Hm. Cheese and rice! You mean the, the cyber terrorism attack you were arrested for was, was to stop Graham? Trinity can assimilate any robot's programming and overwrite it. Take control of it. And not just the programming. She can incorporate a bot's components, expanding herself endlessly. <sighs> if she's been activated, it's already too late. Trinity cannot be stopped. 
Whoa! Oh, peas and carrots! So, Mr. Graham, it was you who activated Trinity. Dr. Blackwell wasn't around to stop you this time, yet you're scapegoating him again, just the same. It was never about progress with you. Just money. Always money. No, 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 this isn't my fault! Her warning label didn't mention all this. I mean, not specifically. I blame her creators. I blame the shareholders. I blame corporate society. I blame my parents! <sighs> Trinity was my experiment. She was ultimately deemed a failure, but she was an educational one. I put everything I learned from creating her into Mighty Number no. 9. Beck is our only hope of stopping her. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I didn't recognize you with that ridiculous hairdo, but you're Bill Blackwell! No, my name is William White. I'm not Bill Blackwell. And I haven't been for a long time. <laughs>